than what I've, I was used to. Um, obviously, uh, me and Denard, you know, we go way back. You know, he drafted me, and, um, you know, it's a little tweaks and, and, and wrinkles. Uh, but definitely, you know, I know the playbook, and, you know, I'm looking forward to the opportunity, man. So you coming back, is it a field thing, a pain tolerance, what will it take for you to be able to go? Oh, I'll be there. You'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there. I'm, I'll be ready to go. Excited? Excited to go against your former team out of the match? I mean, super excited, but I'm excited because it's the next opportunity, man, and I get to be back on the field. So that's what I'm excited for. Jamal, we got a taste of it Sunday. What do you think this defense, and specifically the secondary, is capable of? I mean, the sky's the limit. You know, obviously, uh, you know, we, it was one game. We got we to gotta keep our head down and... Uh, we don't, we don't, we don't look, you know, in the future. We don't, you know, look in the past. We just stay level-headed. Uh, we keep our head down and we grind. And um, what we did last week don't really matter. You know, it, it's about what we do this week. We obviously got a, a hell of an opponent coming in and a rod in the crew, and so we, we, we got our hands full. Have you played against Rogers in your career? Uh, I think so. I hope so. Yeah, I did. I did. Sorry, I didn't get nah, you. No, it's you okay. I'm messing with you. I did. Yes, ma'am. How dangerous is he? Uh, you know, Jeff uh, Simmons talked about that that hard count, and he mm. got the Niners uh, with a free play the other night. Mm. I mean, uh, if you're if you're in a position where you're blitzing, how careful do you have to be when he's yelling out and, and calling out signals? Well, I mean, it's not just him. I mean, you got to be careful regardless of who you play. Um, you obviously want to watch the ball and, and, and you know understand ball key, understand you know uh, his audibles, dummy calls. Uh, his cadence, all of those things really matter, right? So, um, you know, obviously that's what we have time for. We study and we put in the work. And obviously, you know, he's going to throw some new wrinkles at us, but we just got to be ready. Like, I could look to my left and say, this guy going to win. And that's what he did on Sunday. So it's, it's, it's exciting. And um, hopefully we can keep growing as a group. You know, as, as, as the two pairs been on the field with him, it's always it's fun to see him do what he do uh, because, you know, he come to the sideline and, and he let you hear, like, they can't block me. So, like I say, it's fun to watch, most definitely. How about in general, ready for the home opener? How much are you guys looking forward to performing in front of, in front of the I'm, 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 most, I'm, I'm kind of excited to be able to get back to Nissan. Um, time I played in Nissan was when I got hurt. So I'm, I'm very excited at that. And like I said, when we had that um, open practice at the stadium, you saw and you felt the energy, even in preseason. So um, I hope they bring some energy. and. Um, get a win on our first home game. Yeah. Now with Ernest Jones as a teammate, what kind of stands out about him and, and what have you enjoyed about working with him? Um, you know, we're not in the same room, but just being able to see him on the field and, you know, even when the walkthrough, we're doing walkthrough, you could tell how much he he want to learn and he ready to get on the field just by hearing the, some of the things he's saying and, you know, walking over to some of the D-linemen sometimes, like myself, and asking questions, um, you know, and that's one of the biggest things that, when you and your line back on the same page, you know um, they make plays and you also make plays. So um, that's just not him. That's just with Gibby and uh, K9 as well. So it's always, like I said, having a linebacker who um, communicate with, with his D line. Um, I think that's impressive, and that's one of the things that stands out about him so far. What's the key going against a guy like Rogers, who's seen a little bit of everything, been around so long that you're probably not going to fool him with much? I mean, when it come down to it, it's, all, it's about us. You know, long we doing what we got to do on defense and playing the right technique, um, our eyes on the back end and not even the back end, with up front, you know, and then just being disciplined. You have to be disciplined against a guy like um, A-Rod. And, you know, he's been around a long time. He didn't saw it all. So, um, you know, we, I think at the end of the day, we have to be disciplined um, and just trust trust what we do best and that play Titans football. It's pretty dope. And now I get to play against him. So. I think it's gonna go out, I'm gonna go out there and have fun and you know just be myself. What um, some people you know going into the draft were concerned about your pass rush. Uh, <laughs> what y'all? What's that? You said people was worried some, about some my pass rush. Were, said you know that, that was what some critics said that maybe you shouldn't be in a pass rush. Oh yeah, like for real. Yeah, I yeah. mean, y'all seen it. My senior at UT, the real UT by the way. I mean, y'all seen it. So I mean, I really don't have much to say. And, and do you feel like you gave another pretty good example? In the I mean, I'm not here to give examples to other people. I'm here to just play the game I love and be the best I can be. That arm over, the quick arm over that you use, is that something that you, you know, developed over time? Or? Uh, I mean, that move been around for so long, but anyway, I still call it the T-sweat move. I, that's, it's a good move to use, you know, especially for a big guy like me that not really – 
thinking I'm going to move side to side. It's mainly just down the middle. So. But did you, Who are some of the guys that, that you've watched over time, you know, you being a bigger guy, right, right, right. Oh. Uh, man. Uh, I would say uh, I watch Big Vita, uh, Big Will Fork, uh, Big Sue. Cox, all those type of guys. You, you all the bigger guys. You ever watch Lo Tanada from Baltimore? No, I haven't got to him. Very similar. Yeah. yeah. What, did you, what did you think of, uh, did you see what Brian Bollinger's nickname uh, was for uh, you? Oh, the T-Pain? Yeah, yeah. What, what do, you, do you like it or not so much? I or? mean, it is what it is, but my nickname, Milo, so. Oh, really? Milo. Yeah. What's, what's, Who uh, gave you that nickname? You that? My godma. And do you like meatloaf? Is that yeah, call me if you say meatloaf, I'm gonna answer. How uh, how'd you get how'd you get the meatloaf? Huh? You eat a lot of meatloaf? No, nah, so the crazy thing is I was playing it was a basketball game. I was playing basketball when I was young. And then out of nowhere, she was like, get a meatloaf. And since then that's been my nickname. You ever seen old school? The old school meatloaf? I heard about it. Old school movie? Uh-uh. No, nah, I haven't seen that. <laughs> Uh, boxed out the defender there. Did he do a better job recognizing it than he did? Uh, to be honest, my my thought was I was running my route and I seen the, the DN coming out there to double team. So I kind of felt like that wasn't the play, that wasn't the throw. So I kind of took my eyes off as I'm going away because I thought he was getting taking a sack, you know. So then when I turned around, he ended up trying to get rid of the ball. I don't think he was trying to throw it to me initially. He was just thinking he was just trying to get rid of it so he don't take the sack. But in that situation, just take the sack. Just take the sack. And we'll move on, you know. But, um, he made a mistake, which, which he wished he would have had back, but uh, we all got faith in him. We all know what type of caliber player he is, and he's going to bounce back and be ready to go this week. So you were, in fact, surprised that he did throw it? Just a little bit. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, you, you went against Sauce Gardner his rookie year. Well, you played against him. You may not have matched up all the right. time. But what are some of the things that you've seen then and you see now? Uh, he's just he's just long and rangy. When, when you got a corner, that's like kind of like Snead. You know, you got a longer guy, taller guy, long, could run. Um, it's it's kind of tough for receivers, you know. It's kind of uh, tough to just run away from the guy, knowing that how long and how athletic that he is, you know. But he's beatable. Don't get me wrong. Every DB in this league is beatable, you know. And I was just, it just it just takes the right concepts and the, and the right coaching to set us up and uh, getting into plays to allow us to get open. So um, I think he's definitely one of the best. In, at the position, but uh, he's beatable. When you have a guy like that that can travel with whoever it may be, like how much have you seen that in the past like impact the game? Uh, not much. I mean, at the end of the day, you got to still cover every guy. You know, it ain't going to be a one-guy show never around the league. If you look about it, look around, um, it's usually three, two, two guys that you really got to try to control in the pass game, you know, but um, uh, I don't think he's – he didn't never, all the games I played against him, he didn't really travel with a guy. You know, okay. like when I was there in Cincy, he just stayed aside. Or I forget if he was boundary or field, but either way, he's going to have strong matchups against any one of us that line up there. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we just got to make them plays. Um, you know, he's explosive. He, he's an explosive player, um, which you saw last year. And, um, you know, obviously he didn't see too much of it last Sunday, but, you know, that's a guy that he has that in him. So we got to make sure that we keep him, you know, contained. How about in general, <clears throat> just, you know, being back in front of the whole fans? Mm -hmm. I know we're excited. Um, you know, as a defense, you know, our, we're trying to make the fans come out and see us. So we want to be, you know, as aggressive, you know, as active as we can on the defensive end to, you know, make the crowd stay in it, not just when the offense is out there. A lot of guys have been talking all week, just, you know, for the last couple of days about just crushing what happened Sunday and getting ready, you know, for this game. As a leader, how much do you take that upon yourself to get that message? Yeah, I mean, 24 hour rule, you know what I mean? Right after the game. Uh, make the corrections, you know, make everything else right, and then it's time to move on. You know, can't live in the past. So, I mean, we've done that. We have a, a veteran olden group with a mix of young guys that are following our lead. When you've got a guy that you know is trying to get the ball out as quick as possible and isn't going to try to bring it back there, does that change the way that you approach on the back end at all, or do you go about it the same way? Um, I mean, you just got to play the game how it is. If that's, what he, if that's, the, if that's the game that they're going to play, then, you know, we have to make those adjustments during the week so that we can, you know, stop them. If they're going to play action pass and throw it deep, you know, we got to be ready for that as well. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to, you know, our technique, our eyes, and if we get lined up, then we'll be pretty good.